divine protection. How does it work? What is it? Well, I, I honestly couldn't tell you the answers to either of those questions, but what I can tell you is how does Carly think it works and what does Carly think it is? So, you know, all of this, obviously take it with a grain of salt and it's just to see if it wiggles anything in you. And if it does, I would love to hear from you down below and connect and see, you know, like maybe we have things to add to each other's understanding of what divine protection is and how it works. So that said, I'm not an expert, but I am going to use my own experience to talk a little bit talk a little bit about this because it's a topic that I have seen play out in I'm going to say like three different situations in the last like 4 days. And there there's a lot out there in the spiritual community about like protection and protecting yourself and protecting your aura. And it makes it all sound so active. Like, like if you forget to do your protection, or if you forget to put that crystal in your pocket, that's, that's the one that protects you and your aura, like then you're not protected. And that may or may not be true, as I said in the very beginning, but I don't think it's true. I personally don't think there's anything that we do or don't do that leaves us any more protected or any less protected. I personally believe that timing is divine protection and that's all. So either the timing lines up and we receive something. And in that case, I would say that's part of our journey. That's part of our healing path that whether it was a positive experience or a negative experience, that was part of what we came here for. And the only reason it got to us was because we needed it and our expanded self knew that. And so that's why, you know, we are so divinely protected. No harm comes to us that is not necessary for our journey. Again, these are my own beliefs. But sometimes harm does come to us. So what the hell? Did I not protect myself this morning? Did I not do it right? It's not like that. I genuinely don't think it's like that. I think it is a matter of when we signed up to be human, we knew that life is suffering. To quote the Buddhists, like I'm not Buddhist, but life is suffering. Pain is guaranteed right? Like being human, it involves all of that, love and loss, pleasure and pain. That's, that's what being human is. So sometimes pain and harm does come to us to help us grow and evolve in the way that we meant to. And other times the timing doesn't work out. The timing doesn't line up to where maybe even something that you really want, it can't get to you. And now, you know, like I, I witnessed one scenario yesterday where it was pretty neutral. Like the person showed up, there was like a slight miscommunication where the person showed up where they were supposed to be. And the other person who was supposed to meet them was like, oh shit, I forgot. I'm not there. Can you just leave it? I'll call you tomorrow. We can talk about it over the phone. And so rather than being there in person, she forgot and missed that in-person interaction. And after the fact was, I mean, like I said, pretty neutral, but did make the comment like, that's too bad. Like I really wanted to meet that person. I've never met him face to face. I only ever talked to him over the phone. And that person like was a little annoyed or like, why didn't I think of this? Like, why didn't I just do this? Like I could have just run out there and met up with them. Like I could have said, wait five minutes and I'll be right there. Why didn't I think of that? And like more, the most agitation that they felt was like kind of at themselves, like dumbass. like, why didn't I think of that? And in my mind, I mean, this is not a spiritual person whatsoever, so I don't voice any of this, but in my mind, I'm sitting there thinking, you clearly were not meant to meet that person. This person has been in your life for years and you've never met them face to face. Life has never brought you face to face with this person. What does that tell me? That tells me it's not meant to be. That either you guys meeting up face to face would cause unnecessary harm to you from them, or it would cause unnecessary harm to them from you. And 
before we get too far into playing any kind of blame game, I want to talk a little bit about how harm can come to you from another person, but like not directly from them. So hear me out on this example, like in that, in that example, a couple days ago, the person was telling me about it yesterday, but it happened the day before that. So that person who did show up in the right place at the right time was prepared to stay there for like half an hour, an hour and like go through what they were dropping off with the other person. And because they just left it, they were only there for a minute or two. And when I say unnecessary harm, it's like, imagine the timing, the difference, like they got back in their car after a couple minutes and they drove home. They drove back to wherever it was that they were going. And probably that was a very similar location to where they would have gone an hour later. But now it's like when they get on the road, they're with a whole different set of drivers. If they stop at the store, there's a whole different set of shoppers in there because now they're 50 minutes ahead of schedule. So they're going to have a completely different path through the world. And it's like, what if that person, like if the second one had shown up where they were supposed to be, like if they hadn't forgot and they had their meeting and like nobody harmed anybody, I'm sure it would have been a very friendly conversation. But like, what if like when they left an hour later, now they're on the road with that traffic. Now they're in the store with those shoppers and some other kind of unfortunate car runs them off the road or a semi merges and crashes into them or somebody pulls out off a red light and hits them or something like that where I do believe that not only was the person who forgot totally protected from they were clearly not supposed to be in that spot. So their conscious mind did not remember, did not remind them that, hey, you need to go do this because they didn't. They didn't need to go do that. That's why they forgot because that's protection. That's divine protection. Forgetting and not showing up where you're supposed to be, that's divine protection because your whole entire life just got rerouted in terms of your timing. <clears throat> it's like when you miss a turn and then the map, map quest is like recalculating, rerouting your desk, like rerouting your map and sending you on a slightly different way changes everything. It literally changes everything. So not only did the person get protected by forgetting, but possibly that forgetfulness protected the other person from being in the wrong place at the wrong, wrong time. Like this person, the second one forgetting, it could have saved that other person's life. Define protection. Like even when somebody is, you know, like mad at us and that's the reason that they don't show up or whatever, like again, divine protection. So the second example was a little bit different and it was again, two people supposed to meet up and one person gets sick, divine protection, divine protection for the sick one from the well one. Like possibly that conversation was going to do more harm than good. And that's why the person got sick and like, isn't able to go divine protection for the well one from the sick one, like the well one is being protected because the other one got sick and can't go. And again, I am not talking about like the one's going to bring a machete and murder the other one. Like I'm talking about car accidents and accidents that can happen, that happen all day, every day that like are all a matter of timing. Are you in the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the wrong time? And so often divine protection comes in the form of a headache that makes you wrap up early and go home instead of go out to dinner with your friends or a cold that has you cancel on a friend when you were supposed to meet up and you really, really, really wanted to, but you didn't want to make them sick. And so you don't go divine protection for you and for them, for both of you, that that experience like clearly was not meant to happen. It was not necessary. It was not constructive. It was not helpful. And these are all like super benign. Like I'm not talking about like two people who intend to harm each other, but I do want to talk about that because I had an experience about a year ago where someone did intend me 
physical harm or some kind of harm. And it had me in my fear for a little while. And I'm honestly really grateful for that experience because it brought me to this understanding of divine protection and how it works. Because all day, every day, we each and every one of us are receiving impulses. Impulses like, I have to go to the bathroom, I'm gonna go pee. Impulses like, I'm thirsty, I'm gonna go get some water. Impulses like, I'm hungry and I have no food in the house, I'm gonna run to the grocery store real quick. Impulses like, ooh, I just remembered, I need to call mom and ask her X, Y, Z impulses all day, every day. And the more we follow those impulses in real time, don't question them. Don't make them make sense. Don't make like, you know, I think about every time I think about our intuition and like how I used to treat it of like, well, that doesn't even make sense. I'm not going to do that. It's like, that's like the teacher telling the kid, like you didn't show your work. So you fail. And it's like, kid, I got the right answer. Doesn't matter. You didn't show how you got there. So I don't accept it. That's how I treated my intuition. <laughs> so this, this point, at this point in my life, I no longer do that. I accept whatever answer, whatever impulse it gives me. And basically my understanding at this point is the more you're following your impulses, the more you're following your intu intuition, the more divinely protected you are. That in terms of us taking action to create protection for ourselves, all we have to do, and again, these are just my beliefs, all we have to do is follow our natural impulses. Like when I was in my fear that this person was going to come, like basically that this person was going to come to my house and hurt me, that my guides, my angels, my, my ancestors, my divine support, my spiritual support, my divine protection spoke up and told me, that's never going to happen. They're, they're never going to bring you harm. And here's why we know that. Not because they may not try. They might try. They might get this wild idea at some point. They might, you know, drink a few too many beers and get this idea in their head that, that yep, that's what they need to do. They need to run right over here and, and mess me up or whatever. And my divine support was very clear that that absolutely, that part is possible. That part is possible. They might decide to do that. They have free will and our divine protection cannot alter the free will of another person. So we can't make other people leave us alone. We can't make other people choose differently than they would choose all by themselves. So yes, that person may decide to do that. But let me tell you what, <laughs> this is my spiritual support talking to me. You won't be there. When they show up at your house, you won't be there because you're really good at listening to your impulses. And on multiple occasions, I have like randomly got in my car, drove an hour round trip to go to Topeka to get a Starbucks. And that sounds so irresponsible, like for the planet and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's like, those are the kinds of things that let me know that I, I mean, I believed them when they said that, like, we can't stop them from doing whatever it is that they're going to do, but we can move you. We can get you out of there. We can give you an impulse like, hey, it's been three weeks since I saw my, my parents' kittens and I really want to go see them. I want to hold a kitty. So I get in my car and I drive over there. It's like, we don't know. We don't know what would happen if you ignored it. What would happen if you didn't listen to your gut and you stayed put? What would be walking up to you? in that location. When your intuition tells you to go somewhere and it sounds like the most fun idea you could ever think to do, go there <laughs> because that's how they lure us is with the path of most fun. That's how those impulses work. That like, that's how, that's what they told me when they were like, no, we would just move you. You just wouldn't be there when they showed up and then no harm's going to come to you. Um, unless of course, like that disclaimer at the very beginning, like if the harm is necessary for your spiritual path, it will reach you. But even then it's only reaching you in the dose of exactly what's necessary and not one bit, not one bit more. And so, yeah, like the fact that I follow my impulses of fun, my spiritual support has assured me that that is divine protection. 
following your impulses for what sounds fun to you in this moment right here, right now. Go do that. And if you're always following those impulses, then you're protected. You're in the right place at the right time. And that is spiritual protection, allowing timing to protect you. If you're not there when the person shows up, it alters everything. It alters everything. And there are so many different ways that our timing can be altered. We can be delayed. We can be sped up. We can be taken off course. We can be put on a completely different course. And I've heard a lot of talk also lately. This is a slightly different topic, but though somewhat related to being able to follow your impulses, um, is impatience. So like impatience and basically demanding fast timing all the time. And that's not divine protection. Going fast all the time is harmful. You'll run yourself right into challenge after challenge, after challenge, after challenge. When you force your timing to be something unnatural, your experience gets out of hand quickly in my experience, as opposed to when you allow yourself to be redirected, It's like, let's say you go somewhere and you think that this is going to be in and out. It's going to take me five, 10 minutes. And after that, I'm going to go to lunch and you go to the place and it does not take five or 10 minutes. It takes you an hour and then you go and the place you were going to go to lunch at is already closed. And some might look at that and be fussy might look at that and be like, God damn it. Why did it take so long at that place? I'm so mad that they slowed me down and then I don't even get to have this for lunch. But again, I would look at that as divine protection. It's like, who knows what was going on inside that restaurant an hour earlier? Who knows like what you would have ordered and how well it would have been cooked could have made you sick. Who knows if you had gone early, would you even, would you have even made it to the restaurant? Would you have made it out of the restaurant and onto your next location? Like when we are delayed or sped up for that matter, it changes everything. And by sped up, I mean like that very first example where the person thought they were going to spend an hour, but the other person didn't show up. So they left after a couple minutes. It's like their timeline got sped up in that moment. They weren't meant to be on that hour later timeline. They were meant to be on this one. And so cooperative component number two over here, totally spaced and forgot, quote unquote, flaked out and didn't show up. And it's like, that's divine protection. Don't get mad at that flaky person. Thank them. Thank them for altering your timeline and move on in your in your ultimate bubble of divine protection. One more example uh, here is <clears throat> one of the things that I hear often from you all and that I'm so grateful that you reflect back to me because it really does feel nice um, is that you like my authenticity and my vulnerability. And I've also heard from a few of you that I could never do that. <laughs> I could never. And I I bring it up here because it fits so well inside of this whole concept of divine protection. I, honest to goodness, look at every single one of these videos as being divinely protected. And it's so funny how like I'll listen to a recording where like in the very beginning, I do something that's like super awkward or like cringe or, you know, like just kind of like makes my stomach turn a little bit. I'm like, why did I say it like that? Like, what was I even going for there? That just, oh my God, that's so stupid. And (laughs) Like I'll do this to myself sometimes. And then I'll think, oh, divine protection. Okay. All right. I see what you did there. I see why you had me say that really awkward, uncomfortable thing because people who aren't ready for it, people who mean me more harm than good, or just people in general who aren't lined up with this material right there, that's where they're going to drop off this video and they're not going to hear any of the rest of it. 
So every single one of my videos, to be able to get to the good part, you got to last through the vulnerable part. And most people walk away at that point. And that is not rejection. It is divine protection. It is, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's how I lean in to sharing my vulnerability is because I trust fully that like right here, you know, when you look behind the scenes, like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen behind the scenes of YouTube, but on every single video, it shows you not only how many people have watched it and how many hours they spent watching it, but you get a graph that shows you like, where did they watch in your video? And so usually the very beginning, like zero, zero is at 100%. And almost immediately, there's always like a very sharp decline. Like lots of people, like when you see a video has a million views or something like that, not one of mine someday, but a million views, maybe 10% of those people watched the whole video, probably not even that many. Um, and about 80% of them probably watched less than 20 seconds of that video. So like in the first 10 seconds, 20 seconds, there's the steep drop where, you know, 10% of people are left after the first 20 seconds. And so it's like, even if people find my videos, I'm not worried about them, like finding something and like me feeling exposed or whatever. Like I fully trust that if you can sit here and listen to me talk for 21 minutes, you deserve to hear exactly what I'm saying. Like you have every right to this transmission. If you can sit here and tolerate my vulnerability, then, you know, you get to be here. Not everyone can, not everyone can tolerate our energy. And that also counts as divine protection.